Alright, so the fifth episode of Obi-Wan Kenobi just came out. So, uh, hmm, I gotta say, I'm really liking where this is going. So it's basically about Obi-Wan and those people who helped rescue Leia from the last episode. They're trying to find a way to get off the planet. And, uh, yeah, the Empire's immediately on their hunt. And, uh, yeah, Vader's ready and, uh, Reva's ready. And, uh, yeah, it's basically just a lot of build-up in this episode. And, uh, here's a spoiler warning. We see a flashback of Anakin Obi-Wan. My jaw dropped when I saw it. I was just like, wow. We live in a world where Hayden Christensen and Ewan McGregor are together in a scene again after so long. Like, holy dang. Now, um, I know a lot of people want flashbacks, me too, but, like, I didn't let flashbacks ruin my experience for the show, because I still thought the show was great, even without flashbacks. I would have been disappointed if we didn't get any flashbacks, but I wouldn't be consumed by it. Now, you can have your opinions, of course. It's just, like, I just feel like saying that, getting that off my chest, but, uh, yeah, this episode was great. It was just, like, a lot of action excitement i just loved how obi-wan in the flashbacks is teaching anakin going he goes your 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 strike for victory blinds you anakin that's just a very obi-wan thing to say and uh yeah it was very nice and uh yeah i was wondering where it all took place because it looked like it's before anakin got his hand slid off but uh yeah it definitely took place between, like, Attack of the Clones and Phantom Menace, for sure. So, uh, yeah. Like, and, uh, we see Vader's perspective, and, yeah, he's ready to take on Obi-Wan. And, uh, yeah, I love how we see Obi-Wan manipulate Reva, because, like, he helps find his way to the defeater by not fighting, but by tricking her into having him leave the planet, and by, yeah, he gets captured, of course, but then he gets his communicator and lightsaber to that guy from Internals, I'm sorry, I don't know his name, and, uh, yeah, and so, uh, eventually, the Empire does try to get in, and, uh, we see Tala sacrifice herself, I felt like we could have learned more about her, but, um, uh, maybe we'll see her again, I don't know, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was a it was a good scene, not the best sub- sacrifice, because we've seen a lot of sacrifices in Star Wars, so, uh, yeah, and, uh, I love the part that really got me in this episode, is as, as all the characters escape with Leia and Obi-Wan, they have, they trick Vader into thinking another starship was trying to leave, and Vader just destroys it, it's like the straight out of the force unleashed i thought that was cool and then but then the real ship comes out and it's just like haha the vader and and, uh, yeah and uh reva decides to betray vader by attacking him and you know how that's gonna go vader then stops the lightsaber and uh yeah he defeats reva and stabs her and i thought she was gonna die but no it looks like she's not and uh here's another big spoiler the Grand Inquisitor is alive. I knew it. I just knew it. They knew what they were doing with the story. And people were just like, why are they killing off characters? I'm just like, let the story flow. Like, the story isn't finished yet. And we're getting the next episode Wednesday. So, uh, yeah, it looks like Reva's going to find Luke Skywalker. Because the dude from Internals dropped the communicator that had the message from Bail Organa. About Luke, and, uh, yeah, looks like Reva might be going to Tatooine. We obviously know Luke's gonna be fine, but, like, you just know something's gonna happen. Yeah, I really felt th- this episode was great. I love the flashbacks. I love the intensity. Oh, yeah, and we see over 66 flashbacks. We see Anakin, Vlant dark side. They even had a sensor early in the episode. So, yeah, you know, some stuff's gonna go down, and we see Anakin kill children. Not fun to see. 
it was dark for sure, but like, that's what happened, and so, yeah, I just, I just love Star Wars, I love this world, like, we've gone this far in Star Wars, we're seeing Ewan McGregor back, we're seeing Hayden Christensen as Anakin again, he's completely chill with playing this character again, we're seeing James Earl Jones voice Vader for just this six part show, like, that's amazing. So, uh, yeah, I didn't really have any issues with this episode. It was just nitpicks, but, like, yeah, this is a good episode. I'd give it a, a 9 out of 10. So, uh, please, tell me what you think. If you watch this video, please tell me what you think of Obi-Wan Episode 5. Thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you always.